order the meeting of the Library Board of Trustees for Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Okay, Miss Allen? Here. Miss Clemens? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Hendon? Here. Miss Conan? Here. Miss Red? Here. Thank you. Okay, first thing we're going to do, Christopher, is give you the oath of office. You stand. Raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Christopher Harding. Repeat, and then repeat after me. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as trustee. I'll faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as trustee. And for the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. For the Cincinnati and Public Library. You read that again. <laughs> in and for the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. And for the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And in accordance with the laws now in effect. And with the accordance with the laws now in effect. And hereto after to be enacted. And hereto and hereafter to be enacted. During my continuance in said office. During my continuance in said office. Thank you. We get them signed now. Yeah, sure. I think that'd be good. and participation. We have none? So I don't have to read it? Nope. Yay. <laughs> it's a whole paragraph. <laughs> okay, turning things over to Paula Bremheger for her report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brendan. So my first thing is, of course, to welcome Christopher Hardy as our newest appointment to the library board. He is a graduate of Xavier University received his bachelor's degree with honors in political science from Xavier's premier interdisciplinary program, Philosophy, Politics, and the Public. Since moving to Cincinnati from Portland, Oregon, he's worked as a political consultant on several countywide campaigns, including multiple Democratic candidates for office in Issue 7 Transit Levy. He formerly worked in Washington, D.C. for the, how do I say it, vegan? The Fegan Team. Vegan, okay, thank you. Vegan Team Incorporated, a lobbying firm, and the National Association of Latino Community Asset Builders as a policy associate, working on legislative and federal regulatory affairs. He has also served as the public policy chair for the Ohio State chapter of the League of United Latin American Citizens. Currently, he serves as a bailiff to the Honorable Christopher Wagner in the Hampton County Court of Common Pleas. He's also involved in the local community council as an elected trustee at Clifton Town Meeting. He's a member of the Hamilton County Democratic Party Executive Committee and the Ohio Democratic Party as the Hispanic Caucus Secretary. He is a resident of Clifton. Once again, welcome aboard. <laughs> Next, to touch on our main library South Building closing events, on September 24th, we were joined by community members, guests, elected officials, staff members, and former staff members to celebrate and remember all that the South Building of our main library has contributed to us individually and collectively in its current architectural form over the years. Board Secretary, retired Judge Allen, offered brief comments, and elected officials, Representative Catherine Ingram and Cincinnati Council Member Liz Keating also offered memories of using the South Building. The city and the county did both provide resolutions in honor of the event, and Representative Ingram sent a letter noting the importance of our library and public space. All those are in the exhibit attached to my report. We do have staff presenting at the upcoming Ohio Library Council Convention. Several staff members will be presenting, and the list is below here. We have Building Bench Strength Succession Planning at the Library by Jennifer Rushi and Andrea Kaufman, both in our HR department. Just as a note, uh, Jen Rushi is the person who made the emergency stop out with the nameplate, so special shout out to Jen. Uh, we have Call to Action, partnering to meet changing community health care needs during crisis and beyond. Uh, you all may remember David Siders, who's our civic engagement coordinator. He'll be co-presenting co there. Our very own Stacy Dennison here is doing library writing programs from started to sustainability. And next to her, Brett Bonfield, who is doing planning and next generation library renovation with one foot in and one foot beyond a pandemic. 
Um, we also have, so you want to be a, a manager, Denise Scretchen, a senior branch manager out from Anderson, who actually talked to us at the Price Home meeting. She's going to be co-presenting. The SAVES grant, how the pandemic has shaped our understanding of tech access. Emma Willig, who is our community tech coordinator, she'll be doing a poster session. Also doing a poster session on STEM at my library will be Kate Denier, our manager of the North Central Branch, and Marnie Blanken, who is our children's librarian at Northside. And finally, rounding things out, support and success with new manager orientation. We have Sean Davidson at our Forest Park Branch. Some of you met him recently. We want to have our facilities committee meeting out there, and Casey Tinninger, who is our senior branch manager at the Delhi branch. Also note, uh, as noted in my August board report, two of our staff members, Sondra Presley, the manager of Price Hill, who I know you've all met, and David Siders, will be re honored at the OLC Awards and luncheon tomorrow. So we're very excited about oh, that. Yeah. Speaking of um, awards, our staff was generally rewarded, uh, awarded a Rufus Award and also the Ohio Library Council Innovation Award. So let me explain. We know over the past year and a half, it's been very challenging to say the least, and I am very proud of all of our staff members and all they've accomplished given the unprecedented public health crisis which we've been living with. In recognition of these achievements, we did enthusiastically award every staff member at the library with a Rufus Award for customer service for their commitment to serving the community during a time when the community needed us the most. As Rufus Award winners, each staff member will receive a certificate for one pay day off they can use any time in the next 12 months. Also worth noting, the Ohio Library Council also recognized the tremendous contribution Ohio Public Library community has made during the past 18 months. As such, they have named all public libraries and public library staff as their winner of the 2020 Innovation Award, which recognizes the wide variety of expertise, creative talent, and successful initiatives incorporated in Ohio Public Libraries, regardless of size of staff. Staff can print their OLC Award certificate, certificate from the OLC website. Speaking of presentations, in September I had the opportunity to be the featured speaker at the Rotary Northeast Cincinnati. I updated those members on the library's work during the pandemic and also gave them a look into our extensive facility master plan initiative. In October, just yesterday actually, I did speak at the staff day for the Live Oak Georgia Public Library. It was a virtual session that focused on staff as an essential organizational asset and how to support and encourage staff to stay engaged during times of change. We have a couple of large programs that now have been moved to virtual postponed. Just to note, in August, I had mentioned our annual staff recognition and award event, which was scheduled originally to be held on November 14th. But uh, the event, which is often attended by hundreds of staff and their families, is actually going to be postponed. We're going to look at the progress of the COVID Delta surge in particularly and see if we can maybe hold that event in early 2022. Likewise, our annual Veterans Day program will be virtual again this year. This is again out of consideration for the Delta surge. And this Veterans Day, we will work with community partners to co-host a virtual event aimed at connecting veterans to services and supports that they need, including assistance in achieving personal and career goals and information on health and well-being. Both of these large events are also impacted because of the main library construction project. You know, we often hold those in the large atrium, so during the next two years, we'll have to adjust those anyway. Next, uh, we have a resolution honoring friends leader and volunteer, Mary Lou Aft. So I am requesting that the board adopt a resolution in honor of our very dedicated friends of the library leader and volunteer, Mary Lou Aft, who's retiring from the friends board after more than 30 years of service to our friends and our library. And Ms. Redden has the resolution if you are willing to read that into the record. I am. Whereas Mary Lou Aft joined the volunteer team of the Friends of the Public Library in 1988 and in 1989 became the co-chair of the book sale committee while serving on the Friends Board of Directors. She continued to serve on the board and also volunteered in the book operations through 2020, contributing <laughs> countless hours and incalculable energy to ensure the growth and success of the Friends of the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library, and whereas Mrs. Aft's extensive local, national, and international expertise in the field of volunteerism played a crucial role in expanding the number of Friends volunteers from a small circle of community-minded book lovers to a weekly crew of dozens of individuals with widely diverse backgrounds and interests. And whereas 
Mary Lou Aft's leadership was instrumental in a notable increase of revenues as the Friends added off-site branch special project, special subject, seasonal and online sales resulting in revenues in excess of $5.4 million. And whereas Mrs. Aft's organizational and planning skills were crucial in assisting with three physical moves from the cozy confines of North Cincinnati, not Cor now Coryville branch, to the larger Dana Avenue site and the current Hartwell headquarters, and whereas Mrs. Aft co-sponsored major renovations to the Friends bylaws, thus implementing an organizational structure and operational procedures that keep the Friends sustainable and vibrant for the future, and whereas Mary Lou Aft's recognition as a post-Corbett Award co-winner with Library Trustee Elizabeth Lamachia in 1997 and Inquirer Woman of the Year in 1999, Great Rivers Girl Scout Council Woman of Distinction 2000 and Adada Rafiki Honoree 2013 and the Friends Receipt of the Ohioana Library Association's Cooper Award 2012 and the Ohio Library Council's presentation of its Recognition Award 2013 brought the public library and friends into awareness locally and statewide. And whereas the Honorable Rob Portman's recognition of Mary Lou Aft's dedicated service to the Friends on April 9, 20, 2003 in the United States House of Representatives as Chair of the Friends Board of Directors, including her service as Board President from 1998 to 2003, gained her and the Friends a citation in the Congressional Record. Now therefore, be it resolved in recognition of her more than 30 years of devoted service, leadership, and tireless work, the members of the Board of Trustees thank Mary Lou Aft for her valued contributions to the Friend of the Public Library. Be it further resolved that a copy of the res this resolution be spread among the minutes of the Board of Trustees of the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. Thank you, Ms. Redden. Thank you. And the last thing I have, and then we'll do a, a motion for acceptance of my report, including the resolution and the final item here, which is an update to the library closing schedule. Uh, we had noticed a typo on a Sunday and also lack of recognition uh, noted for one of the federal holidays that falls on a Sunday that will be on Monday. So there's nothing major here. It's just a, a bit of a redo from last month. I think that's it. So we need a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next up, we have Mr. Hendon for the uh, facilities report. All right. The facilities and finance and audit committee met on October 4, 2021, the Forest Park Branch Library. Committee Chair Robert Hendon, committee members Andy Dowler and Greg Wilson, along with board president Diane Kennedy and Red were in attendance. Staff members Paul Graham Peter and Molly DePossi were also in attendance. His recommendation of the committee is the board take the following action. Vision of 2021 estimated resources and annual appropriations. The general fund authorized the following appropriations and change to account for the contribute contribution received earlier this year to purchase library materials. So the library materials fund increases by $5,442.89. CARES Act grant fund confirmed the following appropriation increase to account for activity actual activity in the CARES grant fund. CARES purchase and contract services increased by $17,400. LSTA grant fund authorized the establishment of estimated resources and annual appropriations for two recently awarded LSTA grants. First is intergovernment revenue increased by $104,482. Expenses, purchase and contract services increased by $4,990. Capital outlay increased by $99,438. Building and Repair Fund, authorized modification of the annual appropriations to the Building Repair Fund to account for updates and originally estimated activity by object as follows. Building and Repair Fund expenses, Property maintenance and repair decreased by $551,000. Property rentals increased by $50,000.
other rents and leases increased by a thousand dollars other contracts and purchase services increased by half a million dollars land improvements increased by two million dollars but building improvements decreased by two million two hundred fifty thousand dollars computers and equipment increased by two hundred fifty thousand dollars that there was no net change to expenses Deer Park Branch confirmed the following change orders for Perkins Carmack Construction. Uh, additional data and electric required $36,906.54. Additional painting not in scope $12,852. Additional root drains and associated work $50,604.75. Change orders are primarily a result of additional scope to be adding kitchenette in the large community room, which was inadvertently removed during the final design process. In addition, the interior painting was intended to be completed by library staff. Based on the limiting time of the work, the workload of library staff, and the cost of adding it to the project, it was determined that the best use of resources would be to add this slide to the work by a change order. We anticipate one additional change order to complete the painting. There was also a change order to add additional roof drains and associated work done at the library's request once the landlord had replaced the roofing surface. These change orders are accounted for in the owner's contingency and will still be within the $5 million overall budget. The construction and interior of the branch is ongoing based on the challenges in procuring certain building materials and labor market issues. Completion date has been adjusted to late November. For the Wallen Hills branch accessibility, in the existing building, most of the interior construction is complete. In addition, the foundation is almost complete. Site work for the parking lot across the street continues. Confirm the following change orders to modify GMP for mega construction. Additional electric scope for service placement, $50,490.69. Minor modifications to electric and drywall offset by reduction and undercutting, credit of $12,995.70, deduct from overestimating of CO, change order number eight, carbon reinforcement, credit of $20,566. The largest change order in this period is related to additional expense related to the placement of the electric service. Original plans called for the service to be at the rear east corner. This placement would have resulted in an electric pole in front of the center of the building near the entrance ramp as well as greater cost by Duke. By relocating at the west side, Duke costs were minimized and the pole is at the corner of Taft and Kemper. These change orders are accounted for in the owner contingency. We are still within the overall $12.3 million project budget. Price of branch accessibility confirmed the following change orders. For Delta Electric, additional electric modifications complete the job, $17,064. As previously reported, the library is named in a claim filed by Embus Roofing against Justin Construction. Recently, this came and been, claim has been stayed due to agreed upon arbitration by the two parties. Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office continues to monitor the case on behalf of the library. We're still working on final close-up documentation and a few remaining punch items. The energy retrofit project confirmed the following change order for Gallagher Company. Uh, additional abatement with less various credits for reduced scope, uh, $1,856. We're still working on the final close-up documentation, a few remaining items. In addition to the latest several board reports, the Geiler Company has filed a claim against the library stating the work was performed was beyond the co contract and scope. <clears throat> the attorney representing Geiler has made two voluminous re records requests relating this project. Hamilton County Prosecuting Attorney's Office has recently recommended non-binding mediation and is working with the opposing counsel to develop a plan. Res resolution. Mr. Paula thinks that that is all you need to read. Yeah, what? you can read the motion part, but I don't think you need to read the whole resolution. All the details. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah just. All right, approve the fine resolution as forwarded by Hamilton County Auditor Dusty Rhodes to all county official officers for following resolution to accept the 2022 tax levy rates and amounts. The resolution is to be approved by a roll call vote and return the auditor for 
for October 20, 2021. And then the resolution accepting amounts and rates determined by the Budget Commission, authorizing the tax levy, and certifying them to the county auditor. You can read over that in the report. Yeah. Mr. Hendon, I think we can do a motion to accept all the action items in your report and then we can finish the All right. The info. So I move that we accept all the action items. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Allen? Yeah. Ms. Clements? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. Mr. Hendon? Yes. Ms. Conan? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Okay. Main library project update. Elevator replacement. The work is almost complete on the first group of elevators. In the 1980s, building passenger elevators and the 1950 building service elevator. Once these are complete, the work will move the remaining three 1950s elevators. North Plaza, the demolition work is almost complete. <clears throat> the design for the wall along the north side of Plaza, along Friar Alley, is still being finalized. Other than this wall, we expect the work to move relatively quickly. Skylight replacement. All of the fundamental components, scaffolding, rerouting of drainage, installation of the temporary bathtub roof, and necessary safety elements are complete. The removal of the existing skylight is complete. We recently learned of supply chain issues relating to aluminum fabrication, which may impact the overall project timeline. Turner is working diligently, diligently to source the required materials to keep the project on schedule. South Plaza Mezzanine, design work and the demolition package related to the Plaza Basement Mezzanine is ongoing. The updated timeline is design complete, 10-8-2021, GMP approval, 12-14-2021, construction expect to begin 1-2-2022. Forest Park Branch Replacement. The library is continuing due diligence related to the possible relocation of Forest Park Branch across the street from the current branch. In addition to the previous work done by Chaplin related to placement of a new branch on proposed lot, they recently completed a summary analysis of the proposed lot and the library's current lot based on the site selection <coughs> objectives previously adopted by the board. The library is also working with JS Held to determine both the parking and building capacity on our current site. The information is expected to be completed by the end of October. The ongoing maintenance 2021-23 project, library has executed an agreement with design professional THP and continues to work with Pepper Construction on the CMR agreements. Staff is working with THP team on the scope. Marymount Exterior Courtyard Project. The finishes have been finalized, the materials have been ordered. Anticipated installation of project is during the winter 2021-22. Price Hill Commons. Over the last year, the library's work with architect SHP and landscape designer Martin Kepke on the design. Plans were shared with the community during the branch opening fest festivities. SHP is finalizing the construction documents so we can bid the project over the next few months. Green Township Refresh. We are in the process of defining the scope of the project by working with the design professionals, gathering data from branch staff, and reviewing previous community input. West End Renovation, we're in the process of defining the scope of this project by working with design professionals, gathering data for branch staff and reviewing previous community input. We engaged the architectural firm Moody Nolan to prepare several conceptual feasibility designs to gain a better understanding of the potential scope of cost. Accounting system, the library has been using Central Square One solution since 2013. The system is performing a basic level and does not allow opportunity to make the best use of our resources. We are seeking a system where reduce manual work, eliminate redundancies, capitalize on our current technology, and increase transparency, transparency both internal and external. We have done a preliminary review of several systems and reached out to peers. One of the best in class is Tyler Technologies Muni Solution. We are considering implementation of this product and plan to have a decision in the next few weeks. We anticipate information for the first half of 2022, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hendon. Next up, uh, retired Judge Allen. All right, this is a report of the Human Resources. Nadine Allen is chair, Karen Clemens, and Christopher Harding are members. 
The Human Resources Committee met on October the 8th, 2021, Committee Chair Nadine Allen and the committee members I named, along with Board President Diane Cunningham Redden, were in attendance. Staff members Paula Bram Heger and Kyla Harden were also in attendance. It is the recommendation of the committee that the board accept the following recommendations. Core group benefits. <clears throat> the Human Resources Team and benefits broker USI conducted medical carrier reviews of the most competitive major carriers. Each of the carriers submitted quotes and plans, which were reviewed by our benefits team and our benefits work group. Our decision is to remain with <clears throat> Anthem for our medical plans for 2022, as the rates were competitive at a 5% increase for our current HSA, HMO, and PPO plans. All plan designs will remain the same. A dental carrier review was also conducted and our current carrier returned with a 5% increase in premiums. We have decided to make a dental carrier change to Delta Dental due to the ability to receive the same plan design at no increase in cost. We are recommending that the premium cost share remain the same. Employee 16%, employer 84% for both the current HSA and low deductible PPO medical benefits plans and a cost share of employee 5%, employer 95% for the higher deductible PPO plan and HMO plan. In addition, we recommend that the dental plan cost share remain the same, employee at 35%, employer 65%, and that the uh, library continue to contribute 25% prorated as necessary toward the deductible into the employee's health savings account for staff participating in the HSA plan. The benefits Roll, uh, open enrollment will begin November of, uh, 1st, 2021. And on this portion, I would like to move that the board accept these recommendations. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That is it. All right, as to diversity, equity, inclusion, and culture director, the recruitment process for the DEIC director is well underway with initial interviews conducted the week of September 20th. The final stage of interviews is scheduled for the week of October the 4th with an anticipated hiring recommendation to be delivered the following week. We are incredibly excited for this new position in the library, which means it will be announced this week. Is that correct? This week? Kyla and I are saying by the end of October. Oh, so now we've moved know, that a little bit. We think it will, but we are we've saying. We've moved that a little bit believe, because. Yeah, we believe it will be. Yes. Okay. All right, so therefore everybody will not be calling on October the, the week of October the 4th necessarily. <laughs> Customer Service Appreciation Week. October the 4th marked the beginning of National Customer Service Week, which recognizes hearts of service. The library honored our team in a week-long celebration of all staff who are continually providing excellent customer service. As a culture that recognizes not only the importance of external customer service, but also how critical internal customer service is to our organization. All staff are invited to, to celebrate by participating in the fun activities plan by our staff morale team and senior leadership team. That concludes the Human Resources Committee report. Thank you, Judge Allen. Next up, the Operations Committee. Ms. Clemens. All right, so Paula, I'll start and introduce. All right, I would like to introduce Tara Kressler, the Senior Branch Manager at Sims Township Branch Library. Tara Kressler is the Senior Branch Manager at the Sims Township Branch Library. She earned her Master's in Library Science at the University of Kentucky and her undergraduate degree in Art History at the University of Cincinnati. Before being named Manager at Sims Township in 2007, she was the Manager of the Loveland Branch and the Avondale Branch. She worked for the library previously as a teen librarian at the College Hill branch and as a reference librarian at the Coryville branch. She began her career at the West End branch as a library services assistant in 1996. In addition to her work with the library, Tara has been a longtime member of the Ohio Library Council, holding numerous leadership roles on action councils and the professional development committee. Yes. I'm Sarah Presto, the Senior Branch Manager of the Sims Township Branch. Thank you to the Board of Trustees and members of senior leadership for selecting Sims Township to visit. Welcome. Today I want to share with you how our community has driven 
success of our branch, especially over the last 18 months. When we returned last summer and prepared to reopen for limited services, staff focused on providing access to resources and meeting the critical needs of our customers. Carts of recently returned materials line the entryway, creating a browsable collection and supported social distancing. Interactive displays on nearly every table enticed customers to check out a few more things. When we added the Lucky Day collection, customers exclaimed at the rare finds of hot authors and titles with long waiting lists. Over time, these changes resulted in our regaining nearly 80% of our circulation. In March and April of this year, the majority of our customers returned. Seeing our regular customers again and hearing how excited they were to come in and browse was an unexpected lift to our circulation and well-being. It strengthened our sense of purpose and reminded us of our value. Our fantastic new full-service drive through window went live in May. Making the transition from curbside was seamless and our customers love the added convenience. We now experience more than 100 interactions there daily. We worked hard to remove the barriers for our customers and make their visit feel safe and welcoming. We added outdoor programming, which supported more meaningful reconnections with our families. We held monthly story times with the parks board in the Sims Township area and drew more than 100 customers to those events. Other story times on our patio was a hit with the kids and about 400 attended programs in August. Additional services have also driven community response in the last few months. We reinstated passport services with 12 agents and shifted our passport processing hours from Saturdays to include evenings. This makes the service more accessible. Pre-pandemic, we processed an average of 10 passports per month, and in September, we did 40. Sims also hosted the Hawksworth Blood Drive Van twice, as well as the Ohio Department of Health Vaccination Clinic. We are especially proud to provide COVID tests to our community. So in September, we distributed more than 4,500 tests. I brought with me today boxes of those COVID tests that we're handing out at the drive through window. These tests can be proctored for an official result, which is often necessary for people to return to work or to school, or visit a loved one in a care facility, or to travel, or just delay concerns about symptoms. So I'd love it if you all would pick up a box uh, help yourself for either your household or give those to someone who may need it, okay? Thank you so much for coming to the branch today. It's been a pleasure telling you about our work supporting CHPL customers in the Northeast Planning Zone. Thank you. Thank you very much. A quick point of information. I think that the next section in your report here is a summary yes. of what Tara has um, enthusiastic they already told us. <laughs> okay, so, so then I'll just that, yeah, skip to the right. downtown portion. Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you. Service in the downtown main library during construction. As noted in the director's report on Friday, September 24th, we had a closing ceremony for the South Building. This was the last day that customers were able to access the South Building until it reopens in 2023. Though the collection remains accessible for staff to retrieve for customer use. Immediately following the closing, dozens of main library staff members completed the move of key collections to the second floor of the North Building, as well as the bridge where we will welcome customers for the duration of the construction project. This service complements the Tech Center, which is operating in the first floor of the North Building, along with the current Adult Learning Center, where customers' holds are now located. The makerspace remains on the second floor of the North Building. The only service that remains in the South Building is the Downtown Main Library's drive through which offers seven-day service. The Main Library also resumed in building Sunday hours a week later on Sunday, October 3rd. The Main Library's reduced footprint provides Main Library staff some time to work in branch locations during the construction period. Having less space to cover also gives the public safety team under its new manager, Ebony Gordon, an opportunity to spend time supporting and working more at branches. That's it. Just right. if I can give a quick shout out to all the main library staff who actually did that move overnight on a Friday night into a Saturday. Wow. And, um, it was, <laughs> Kathy's over there shaking her head and Brett kind of does. It was ready to go. So they did a great job. Yeah. I feel compelled to comment too on just what our library has done in 2019 and in 2020, at a time when I know for sure that 
Some of the social services agencies completely closed down, locked their doors, and they had nobody doing any temporary or part-time uh, services to the public. But the library never closed completely. So I brag about this frequently, but I just want the public to know that you know during that time we passed out meals to people who were without us. I'm not sure where they would have been getting that from maybe some churches that stepped in. Um, and we also like passing out the COVID information. But also during voting season, something near and dear to my heart, we made sure that people got all the voter registration forms they needed from our windows. And that's just part of the things that we did that I appreciate from this board. Thank you, Madam President. And Madam CEO. Madam, yeah. <laughs> the CEO. <laughs> the CEO, definitely. Well, yeah, just not to, to add to that, just the simple thing of keeping Wi-Fi on when everything shut down and many children did not have access to Wi-Fi to do required homework, just the thought of, we're the library, we can keep it on 24 hours a day. It's just that yes. simple thing. Yes. It's just, yeah, it's amazing to me that let's nobody else thinks about, of that. And let's not forget you could get your books. <laughs> oh, you could get your books. Get You've your heard the library materials. does things. We have books, too. Yeah. That could be our new tagline. And we have books. Yeah, we have books. And we have books, <laughs> yeah. We give out food, COVID tests, vaccinations, right. and we have books. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, so next up is the strategy committee. And I want to mention that um, the previous chair, Betsy Lamacchia, has her term has expired. So Mr. Hendon is going to read the report in her absence. Mr. Hendon. Uh, this is for information only. Supporting public health, the partnership with the city of Cincinnati Health Department and the Hamilton County Health Department. We continue to provide vaccination clinics in Forest Park for the Mount Healthy Community Green Space Press Hill and Fair. These locations were chosen based on data pointing to higher rates of unvaccinated residents in these neighborhoods. Complete stats on the participation are, aren't avail yet available. 102 people have been vaccinated at the Price Hill branch since August. We have distributed 42,307 at-home test kits between March and September 24. Thousands more kits have been delivered to keep up with demand. During the week of September 27, our shipping and receiving team worked with the Ohio Department of Health to briefly store thousands of kits at our distribution center for Cincinnati Children's and Dayton Children's Hospitals so they could quickly and easily access them locally. Promoting civil, civic engagement. We continue to partner with the Greater Cincinnati Voter Collaborative on voter registration and education. We updated our voter information page and provided a voter voting Mythbusters blog post. We participated in National Voter Registration Day where eight library locations held special voter registration events. Civic Engagement Coordinator David Spiders was invited by the Kettering Foundation and National Issues Forum Institute to speak on a four-person panel on a virtual event entitled Our Public Voice. The panel included two former members of Congress, Loretta Sanchez of California and Charlie Dent of Pennsylvania. Helping job seekers. On September the 2nd, State Representative Cedric Denson, Catherine Ingram, Brian Brigham, Bridget, Kelly, and Jessica Miranda held an unemployment clinic at the Von Hill Branch Library. Library staff, the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services, Hamilton County Community Action Committee, and the Southwest Council of Aging were also there providing resources and assistance to residents. The three, 513 relief bus offered free COVID-19 vaccinations, workforce training, rent, food, utility, Medicare application assistance, and more. The event was very well attended. The Government's Relations Committee Coordinator Eileen Fay is working with State Representative Bill Moore of these at additional library locations. Customer Experience. Customer Experience Manager Justin Rampa will roll out the library's customer experience framework to staff in late October. The framework leverages much of our recent organization work, including the Facility Master Plan and the Minds of All Kinds brand. Justin will engage staff and ideas for using the service skills to create the most robust customer experience model we can, we can across our locations. <coughs> 
Justin will be joined on visits to locations by visual merchandiser Kristen, Chris Keegan. The tour will give staff the opportunity to informally discuss the work on both Justin and Chris and serve as a way to introduce Chris to all locations as he just recently joined the system in late July. Fostering Lifelong Learning. <coughs> Since introducing the program guidelines in 2020, lifelong learning continues to support staff, creating high-impact programs that are community focused and community-driven. For example, a Next Level Programs virtual course provides 16 staff members a six weeks online course focused on using community engagement to evaluate community needs, developing programs that are diverse, equitable, and inclusive, and designing programs that create positive outcomes for all with participants. Upcoming events, Youth Education and Engagement. October 25th, virtual offer visit with James Jasmine Wartman. Learned about Jasmine's writing and participate in a question and answer session with her. October 13th, take your best shot. Story time, Price Hill. Lots of us had questions about COVID-19 vaccines. vaccines. To address them, join us in a story time in partnership with Well Engaged for Health for children of all ages. Adult Education Life Skills, November the 10th, the virtual Black Maternity Matters. We're all welcome and encouraged to join us and learn how to save and protect this fall. Recess vaccines and immunization schedules, injury prevention, and more. programs with community partners. LADD, a, a local organization serving those with developmental lead needs, lists the Adult Learning Center weekly, visits the Adult Learning Center weekly with their clients to receive a, help, a variety of help in using technology. Cincinnati Works Jumpstart program meets regularly at the ACLC's tech room help individuals identify and work on career goals. 16 or 26 virtual fall classes are being offered through the ALC. And here's a few that will be offered. Organize your life with website and apps, high school equivalency study group, Facebook security and privacy. Art and culture for adults, October the 17th, outdoor black poetry slam, Long Hills join us for the evening of poetry and spoken word performances by local black artists to celebrate Black Poetry Day. With honors, the birthday of Juniper Hammond, the first African American to have poetry published in the U.S. Increase your visibility to the community. We have learned, we have launched a new recruitment <coughs> video series based on our brand and highlighted the many ways staff support our communities. Videos can be found on the Work at the Library webpage and on YouTube. And that completes the report. Madam President, may I add one fact to Mr. Pendant's report? Yes, you may. Jasmine Morga, who is noted here as a teen author, and she's won several awards at the Books by the Banks Festival. She was selected, I believe, for like a new author award. And she's also been named by the Ohio Center for the Book for a recent award. She actually was a member of uh, my teen advisory board and spent many, many, many months and years at our library. Yeah. And she partnered in reviewing other teen books many years ago. So she's in, agreed to do some work with us. I'm going to submit a question. And I did have the chance to do a podcast with her not too long ago uh, with the Ohio, I think it's the Ohio Center for the Book. Um, so anyway, I just think that's kind of a fun thing. And that's to talk fun. about the yeah. way that the library um, and she came to the main library as well as the Sims Township and the Blue Ash Branch over the years has impacted folks. And Jasmine is now a very, very successful writer. Oh, nice. That's so, very that's nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it all began with you. We did it. Jasmine's just really talented. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, yeah. like her book is really good. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Hendon. Next up is Technology Committee, Ms. Conan. recommend changing our domain name from cincinnatilibrary.org to chpl.org. 
The library's website would be www.chpl.org. Library staff email addresses would follow the structure. Um, the reasons for these changes include, uh, first, it's easier to remember and faster to type than the current address. <laughs> um, less room for mistakes. Um, chpl.org is inclusive of both the city and the county. Those who do continue to use CincinnatiLibrary.org will automatically be redirected to the new web address, so we won't lose anyone. CHPL is not an acronym or already in use in the Cincinnati and Hamilton County area, meaning the new address will not cause confusion with any other area organization. To make the change, IT staff and marketing would work with vendors and partners to implement the new domain. We anticipate the process to take several months with a target launch date in early 2022. So let's talk about cybersecurity, very popular topic. So over the last two years, the Board of Trustees has been informed of actions the library has taken to increase the security of our online and digital network infrastructure. In light of the increase in threat load and the national media attention given to cybersecurity, um, Holbrook has compiled a roundup of the library safety measures, and I'm going to mention three of them here in our meeting today. Uh, the rest are outlined in the report. The first is a storage project. So the library has increased digital storage needs for multiple backups of files and information, which are essential in case of a crypto lock or ransomware event. Implemented over the summer of 2021, Cumulo storage is expandable and stores three copies of our data, one of which is off-site. These copies will allow us to better be, to be pre better prepared to rebuild our service in, uh, in the case we have a ransomware attack. The next one is Active Directory Cleanup, and this has taken um, the time of our administrators really cleaning up our user and device accounts to ensure optimum performance and network security. IT staff have been meeting since February 2021 to address obsolete accounts and re have removed numerous user and computer device accounts. So thank you to everyone who's been working on that. The last one I'd like to mention is an incident response plan. A significant amount of work has gone into developing an incident response plan in the event of a breach or other security issue. Protocols involving chains of communication among administration, IT, insurance, and other experts which allow us to react quickly to an incident are essential. We plan to finalize and roll out the incident response plan by the end of 2021. So coming soon. Uh, that is the end of the report. Thank you, Ms. Conan. You're welcome. Next up, we have a development committee. Back to Ms. Conan. Well, I'd be happy to Look handle that. that as well. Thank you and so much. Stacy, thank you so much for your work uh, with the foundation and the development items. So good news on the development front. The library has been the grateful recipient of several gifts since August, including a significant contribution from the H.W. Wilson Foundation in recognition of the 2021 John Cotton Dana Award, as well as two LST grants from the State Library of Ohio in support of the digitization of the Newsmakers AV collection with a contribution of $4,999 and purchasing a new book scanner for the library's digital laboratory with a contribution of $99,483. On October 5th, the library hosted the second Mary F. Stern Lecture with Doris Kearns Goodwin at the Aronoff Center for the Performing Arts. Nearly 2,000 people were delighted by Kearns Goodwin at this in-person event. The Library Foundation, since August, the Library Foundation has been the grateful recipient of several significant gifts as follows. Thomas W. Jones in support of the North Plaza Construction Project, the Charles H. Dater Foundation and PNC Charitable Trusts in support of the Homework Helper Program, Pat and Ron Ludecki to create a new and down fund in memory of their son, Scott Ludecki, as well as a gift from the Marie and Agnes Season Good, Good Government Foundation to support the digitization of the Newsmakers AV collection and development of several online exhibits featuring the material. 
Several additional applications for funding have been submitted and are being reviewed. While the library was a finalist for an Impact 100 award this year, unfortunately, the library was not, foundation was not selected as a recipient, but has been encouraged to reapply, which I'm sure we'll be doing. The foundation's annual end of year giving campaign is underway, beginning with an appeal to employees during October. The public multi-channel campaign, mailer, video, and social media is expected to launch before November. This year's campaign features the heartwarming example of customers from the Miami Township Branch Library and their recognition of the impact of the library and staff. Friends of the Public Library, sales at the Friends Warehouse continue to be strong. October is Mender, Member Appreciation Month, where Friends members get 20% off their purchases. The Friends do continue to accept donations from the public on Wednesdays and Sundays from 10 to 3 at the warehouse and are only seeing a slight decrease in volume from earlier in the year. All library branch locations are accepting donations on behalf of the Friends. And finally, the Anderson Township Library Association um, ATLA summer sale in August at Burger Farm and Garden Center was a success raising $16,817. The next ATLA sale is scheduled for June 2022. That's the end of the report. Thank you, Ms. Conan. You're welcome. Uh, could I get a motion for the approval of consent items? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. I, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting's adjourned. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you.